Welcome to the Intentional Success Podcast, where we unpack the top strategies, explore business trends, and drill down into best practices to help your live events production business grow and scale on purpose. I'm your host, Tom Stimson. Hey, welcome everyone to another edition of the Intentional Success Podcast. I'm continuing a series of interviews, and today my guest is Gabe Solomon, who's president of Mertz Crew, which helps its customers by handling freelancer contracts, payments, workers' comp insurance, so that everyone can focus on executing the project. As a former freelancer, let me say, welcome, Gabe. Thank you. Glad to be here today. So I just kind of want to dive right into I've been talking to a lot of folks about the talent market, about what's going on, because that seems to be a major constraint in our industry right now. And I'm hearing statistics that 20 to 5 to 50 percent of professional AV and production freelancers have left the marketplace since 2020. And I can understand that, you know, the middle of the low market folks probably went away and found something work else to do working at an Amazon warehouse. But I expect the real pros are survived and they're still gigging. What's the talk in your world? How do you see this? Yeah. So from what we're hearing from our clients is, is very similar. Um, definitely some of the older freelancers who are ready to retire, they saw that as a catalyst. They've moved on. They've either retired or maybe doing like some small consulting work or something like that. But what we're seeing is that the real professionals have stayed and they're, they're, they're benefiting. Um, we're seeing that the high end techs, um, they're getting as much as 200 plus more on a day rate than they were getting in 2019. So they're really benefiting by the increased business um, and the fact that, you know, frankly, there is a little bit of a scarcity. Um, we, we've we seen some of the younger, uh, the younger guns, if you will, starting to move up, um, but there is a training gap. So there are still some, some, some uh, skill levels that, that need to be increased to, to, to really fill that need. Well, so that brings up the question is, is, anyone really doing training these days? I know, I mean, we see evolve, you know, training programs that evolve. We see some manufacturer training, but are, are your clients doing training? How are we getting these people to move up? Yeah, some of them are, some of them are offering their own workshops, their own uh, courses to try and, you know, bring folks into the industry and even take some of those, uh, those folks who have uh, maybe a couple of years under their belt, help and hone their, uh, their career, their careers a little more. But what we've seen is, you know, the best techs, they're always going to be motivated. They're always going to get the training, whether it's from manufacturer or workshop. And, you know, those those are the go getters. You're never going to have to um, worry about them. And obviously, those are the techs that most of the clients are going to want. But you're going to be paying on the higher end because you've got somebody that's, you know, a little more uh, a little more, you know, on it. Um, when you do see a company offering training, what we advise to the clients that don't offer their own training is when you see a manufacturer or a training workshop that is offering uh, training that you think would be a good fit with what you're looking for is reach out to them, you know, let them know, hey, please pass on to your students that when they get this training or when they get this certification, we have jobs for them. We have things that they would want to do. Um, and what's happened uh, the couple of times that we've helped uh, uh, with that is the the people given the training that's a value to them because now they can go straight to those folks and say hey you're not just learning this for the sake of learning it we actually here's a couple of companies that need this skill reach out to them here's a contact info um and they're finding some uh, some nice returns from that so training is great and all but what about the experience i mean you and i both know that somebody can take a course and learn how to use a product through a course but that doesn't mean they're valuable yet so how do we how do we get experience you know yeah how do i as a freelancer get experience but how do i help these people get experience if i want to hire them yeah that's a great question particularly where we have seen uh folks exit the industry and the 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 pyramid if you will hasn't completely backfilled some of those those spaces um what we're advising our clients is use that opportunity where it makes sense where you have the ability bring one or two extra freelancers on the project, particularly if it's somebody that maybe you've used on a, uh, on a project before where you saw some potential, but now you want to see if they can, they can prove it, give them that opportunity because you're not thinking about today's project. You're thinking about the next 10 and how you can cultivate and, and, and build that relationship with that individual so that they can get that experience and you can see it too. 
Right. And, and I hear a lot of people right now, I, I'm listening to them in my head going, wait a minute, you want me to spend more money on talent when my labor prices are up $200 a day? Um, what, Gabe, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Again, like I said, we're not thinking about just a project today. And not every project is going to be a good right. candidate to be able to execute that. But it's really thinking about you're, you're laying a, a, a pathway to those next 10 projects. So that way you can start to build that bench. You can start to build up that, that strength. Right. It, it's an investment, right? We have 100%. to invest. We have to invest into our talent pool. You know, and back in my day, it was on the job training. There were no classes to take. Yeah. I knew how to do shows because I was a theater kid and I grew up doing shows in theater. I didn't know anything about the technology. So I would get hired and they would send a tech who would come in and say, do this, do this. Here's how it's set up. Do you have any questions? Yeah. And then you get to do it. So that wasn't me shadowing someone else. That's them shadowing me. And that's a key component to training. Too many people try and send the person they're bringing up to follow the experienced person when it should be the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the things that it's interesting. So we've we've challenged some of the schedulers that we support um, to look to bring in those folks. And we've actually, the advice that we've been giving them is to involve their department heads, involve those experienced uh, tech folks that within their own company to be part of that conversation with these potential uh, new techs to say, okay, let's talk to them. Let's find out what some of their skills are. Let's see if we can get a sense of, uh, of scoping that out. So now you know exactly where it makes sense to bring them onto that project. So that really bringing in that partnership is what helps the schedulers make sure they're choosing the right person to give that opportunity to. Well said. So you, you wandered right into a fundamental tenet of scalability, which is that all of your team, your full-time people have to be working at their highest and best use. And sometimes your highest and best use is not going out and doing the show. It's making sure that you have a deep pool of next generation people to do the future shows. Like you said, you're, you're planning 10 years ahead, not one show at a time. Absolutely. So, so talk to me a little bit more about scalability. What are your, what are your, your clients seeing what is their view of the stuff that I've been teaching lately? How is it manifesting in your business? Yeah. So the, the nice thing with Mertz crew is we support a lot of the, the larger enterprise level uh, companies within AV. And then also a lot of what I, what I call enterprise thinking clients on the regional level. And these are the clients that, you know, they invest a lot more into the strategic thinking of their business. And I'll tell you what we have experienced across the board in all of these clients is they have embraced the scalable model um, years ago and have been in have, have put this in practice for quite some time. So Merch Crew has been around for over 20 years and some of our clients, you know, they began doing this in, in the early 2000s where they had that small core team that, you know, kind of could focus on the project elements of it. But it was always supplemented with freelancers. It was mm -hmm. supplemented with those skilled positions that could be different from project to project. So rather than trying to bring all of that in house, you know, using that opportunity to bring that expertise in when you needed it. And what we've seen is those clients have been able to support um, a wider breadth of projects. Um, they've been able to take on, I apologize for that, some more, um, uh, more responsibilities from, uh, bigger, more of diverse types of shows. Um, and then also being able to um, not turn away business and, and make sure it's something that it, you know, makes sense strategically and that they want to be able to, uh, to be able to offer. Um, so the scalable model um, that, that we've seen has been very successful in the company's uh, growth and in terms of what they can, uh, what they can broaden out and support with their clients. But a key component of this, and, 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 and I'll preface this with back in my days at Alford, you know, at Alford Media, we we sourced a lot of freelancers. We had a very, very deep pool of talented people, and we had a fantastic core team of technicians. Now, I would argue that's still not completely scalable because that's a lot of overhead to carry in a seasonal business. However, if you use it wisely, it could be effective. But how do you process freelancers? This is the challenge. We had a great system for onboarding, but if you're not used to bringing people in from the outside, you know, where do you start? Yeah. And that's honestly, that's, that's where we, that's where we excel. That's where we really can bring a lot of value to our clients. Um, so a lot of, a lot of the companies that want to use the scalable model or want to, to introduce scalability into the way that they execute their business have that exact question is like, 
okay, I, I'm in, I like the, the strategic model. How the heck do I do it? And that's really, that's what Mertz crew has been designed to do. So when, when we're advising our clients, when we're helping to support our clients, um, we're making sure that we understand what they're trying to accomplish. What's the venue they're working in. Um, sometimes the 1099 model is appropriate depending on the location and who the folks are that they're working with. Um, and sometimes the W2 model is more appropriate. And we have uh, some partner companies that we can, we can integrate with, uh, to help support that. And that things, you know, think of things like the state of California, which they really don't like the, the 1099 model very much, um, versus, you know, a state like Florida or Nevada, where the 1099 model is more in place. So we help our clients make sure that that contract is set up properly based on where they're at, that the insurances are in place. So that way, God forbid, something happens, mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the coverage is properly set up, um, and then that the payments are executed and all of the, the tax paperwork and all of the things that go along with that are properly administered as well. Because at the end of the day, the client wants to execute their project. They don't want to have to worry about the, ad, the administrative side of it, but they also don't want that risk of it. And so we can help reduce that risk. Right. So there's a there's a huge compliance component to this is that what yes. Merce Crew is doing is is helping your clients with compliance to mitigate risk. Put this in perspective. I know that staffing is the highest risk thing that we do from, you know, just having a successful show. What's the risk to the business? Yeah. In staffing. Absolutely. It, and it could be, it could be pretty tremendous. So depending on, um, where you are and, and, and the way in which you're working with the person, um, the, the change in the freelancer requirements of how you, you know, pay somebody and how you, how you, uh, work with them has changed significantly over the last decade. Um, and there's a lot of different requirements that come into play at the state level, at the local level, at the federal level. Um, and even internationally. So we have clients that we support in the touring, uh, the touring industry. And if you're out of compliance and if for whatever reason, there's an event that triggers a regulatory audit or whatever the case may be, um, you have to make sure that you're prepared to be able to demonstrate that your relationship with that individual is set up properly. So the risk to the business, you know, could be if, if you have it set up incorrectly is penalties, you know, back taxes um, and all sorts of uh, financial uh, penalties that could come along um, just because it's not set up right. And we always like to tell people, hey, you know, those old days of having an umbrella contract and you're like, OK, this will protect me. That's a big no, no these days. And, and it has actually a red flag in a lot of cases um, for those regulatory bodies. Okay. So what i'm what i'm hearing you say again i'm thinking about my listeners are going okay gabe is saying that everything about my labor costs is going up if i'm going to be compliant it's going to cost me more money that's why i've always avoided it you know the agreements have worked for me in the past um and here's tom talking about risk and margin and risk go together so does this mean that we should be charging a lot more money or is this 200 dollars a day was this a market correction or is this freelancers gouging, right? And what should be the response? What is this telling us about how we should be relating to our customers who we are providing staffing services and talent to? That was a big question, but I know you've got thoughts. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What we're advising our clients is, is that the labor costs are going up, but the benefit on the overhead reduction is, is really that benefit, right? You're bringing in those freelancers uh, when you need them for the project. So the projects are aligning with the execution of a project versus a, a, a you know, 24 seven overhead uh, that those companies are carrying. And in some cases the, the, the cost will, uh, will go up um, and can be reflected. And obviously a good conversation with your end client to explain what's happening and kind of how that, uh, how the, the, those things have changed um, can go a long way to help explain that. So at the end of the day, we need to have an honest conversation with our customers, don't we? Very much so. <laughs> and that, and here's the irony is that's why kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier with the training, the only way those costs are going to come down is as the more junior folks come in and begin to get those opportunities um, versus a 30 year veteran that you're going to be paying a much higher cost to that younger person that's coming in to be able to get that experience. 
while they may be willing to charge less to build up their own experience and their own uh, clientele, if you will, um, that's the only way that they're, they're going to be able to see any uh, smoothing of that cost curve uh, coming along. Um, mm-hmm. And that's that's just kind of how it, how it kind of how the how the industry is right now. Well, thank you for that. So quick trend question here. What talent is in the most demand or in other words, what skill set are you saying in the most demand? And then also what skill set is growing the fastest right now? Yeah. So what we're seeing from a specialized perspective, probably the number one thing that we're seeing our clients looking for are LED programmers and LED engineers. Um, Practically everything is LED these days. And it's not just the connecting of the tiles, it's the actual programming. It's being able you know, to make that LED magic uh, really come to life. Um, and that's where we're seeing um, a, a big trend uh, that folks are looking for um, and, and big opportunities for those techs that are entering into to that, uh, that, that part of the, uh, of the LED growing uh, business. Um, streaming, uh, RoboCam ops, that's still, that's still a, um, a, a positive place where we're seeing some demand. Um, we're finding our association clients are, are now offering both a live and a, a taped streamed experience. And what it's interesting, what they're finding is that their association attendees are able to actually charge a higher amount because there could be concurrent breakouts or sessions so they can go to a live session but then also later watch the taped version of what they wanted to see as well so we're seeing clients have uh, some nice success with that and that's trickling down into those those trending uh, places right so what could a talented led engineer programmer or programmer because those are two different roles right yes i I picked up on that (laughs) Um, what can they do to market themselves better yeah, um, it's a combination of the networking. Um, it's a combination of as they're talking to their clients, making sure that they tell them the skills that they're that they're gaining, the, the skills that they're learning. And the number one thing, and it's so funny, a lot of people don't realize techs, good techs, love to recommend other good techs. Mm-hmm. Um, good techs do not want to keep you know secrets um, uh, from you know, particularly their friends or people that they respect. Um, they're happy to help promote them. They're happy to help, you know, encourage them. Oh, hey, if you're looking for this, go to this person. So uh, we always recommend to the techs, make sure you're networking with the other techs that you work with as well as your clients. And there's there's something really nice that happens that promotion begats more promotion. So when techs begin to support each other, we find that that, that becomes a virtuous circle. And, and, and a lot of the techs are happy to share that information um, with their clients and whatnot. So through that networking, they can they can find uh, some more opportunities that they might not have had otherwise. Right. So for the freelancer, a good technique is that if you can't, if you're offered a job and you can't take it for whatever reason, refer somebody else. Have a couple of referrals ready. Likewise, Absolutely. if you're hiring and the person you're hiring is not available, ask them for a referral. Absolutely. That's how we build the bench. That's how we expand our profile. This is how we raise our credibility. Always recommend somebody who's better than you are yep. so that people will keep coming back to you and Absolutely. trust you. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. So um, I do I do need to pause and thank you for opting to, to sponsor Jumpstart Workshops. Um, tell us more about why this type of a networking event is important to companies like yours. Yeah, absolutely. So we are true believers in the scalability model. We've watched it work with our clients. We've seen our clients benefit. Um, and at post COVID, our clients, because they were already in a little bit of that model, they they rebounded very, very quickly. So we, we are definitely um, um, advocates of the scalability model. So we're, we're, we like to be around um, other clients that are interested in learning more about how to right. execute wow. against that. We also know that a lot of companies, while they're excited about the scalability model, they don't know how to get started. How do I bring in these freelancers? How do I begin to to move towards that scalable side? And that's where we can come in and we can help uh, support them. And it's funny, um, I was inspired by something that Carl Becker recently said on your podcast is we want to be that partner that can help them create value. Um, that we want to create value for for those clients to understand how we can help them achieve their strategic goals. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're just looking for a bottom line price, we're happy to recommend 
you know, another vendor that might be a better fit. But if they're looking for a strategic partner to help create the value, that's that's where we want to be. And that's what we think Jumpstart provides that opportunity to have those conversations. Oh, thank you for that. You know, it's not it, well, while scalability in sourcing and outsourcing is a huge part of it. It's the underlying processes. Yeah. And you have to change your processes. You change the roles of the people to optimize them. You have to have a supply chain and and supports and strategic partners like Mertz Crew in order to make this model work for you so that you can focus on the things that are really important, which is your clients don't care about your contract with freelancers or how they get paid. They care that a good job is going to be gotten. Um, Absolutely. So what are, tell me more about Mertz Crew. What are some common misperceptions about what you folks do? I mean, first of all, I know you're not a staffing agency. Nope. So what do people really need to know about what you do besides compliance? Yeah. So that is, the, like you said, that's the biggest misconception um, is that we don't pick the crews. Most of our clients, they already know the freelancers that they want to work with. Uh, they, they've got, you know, they've got that handled. They need support from us in that administration to make sure that contract, mm -hmm. the insurance and the payment are set, set up properly. Um, and so we do that through our software. Um, we make sure that the process that we use, that the software kind of requires the person to set up those agreements, um, helps them remain in compliance with, with what they're trying to achieve um, and what they're trying to accomplish. So that's, that's 100% where that number one misconception comes, uh, misperception comes in. Um, and then the other side in terms of what we do with the software, we have all sorts of, you know, additional uh, support elements from, you know, crewing, tracking employees, tracking third party vendors, you know, all that fun software stuff that you get to do. But it's really all in service of providing that core, that, uh, that core element of removing the risk, uh, I mean, the compliance protection. Right. And, and shout out to the freelancers, right? It's free for a freelancer to be in the Mertz crew network, either through a single employer or they can be connected to other potential buyers. Is that true? That's 100% correct. So our founder actually started his career as a freelancer, much like yourself. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that is the core tenant to how Mertz crew works is it will never, there was, there's never a cost for the freelancer to be part of, uh, to be part of Mertz crew. And we have a lot of folks who have come in and that they have uh, created their own profiles and registered. Um, and they do, they are visible to other clients. Um, our clients do have some tools within our software to make some introductions between themselves and freelancers, you know, wherever they may be, depending on what they need for their project. So again, while we're not a staffing agency, we do have tools to help that connection happen, help make those introductions. So when those opportunities do arise, there can be um, an opportunity to find somebody new. Awesome, thank you. Well, Gabe, thank you so much for sharing your time and your insights uh, with us, helping us one learn more about Merch Crew, but under better understanding why this is important, how it matters to your clients and my clients, what we can all do better so that we can grow and make more money. Thank you for that. It's my pleasure. All right. It's been wonderful. We'll talk again soon. Thanks everybody for listening. We'll see you on the next podcast. If you want to find out more about today's episode, go to trstimson.com slash podcast, where you'll find the show notes, related links, and tons of other valuable resources. If you haven't already subscribed to the Intentional Success Podcast, please do so, and I'd greatly appreciate if you would rate and review the show. Also, if you think you might be a good fit to work together or want more information about the Stimson Group, I'd love to hear from you. Visit trstimson.com for more information.